Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Today we'll be looking at a data set about FIFA matches from 2018 and be using a number of uh, uh, pieces of data about the match to try to predict uh, which team will get man of the match. So uh, if it's yes, that will mean that the this uh, playing team uh, got it, and if it's no, that means the opposing team will get it. All right, let's get into it. So we'll start off by importing all of our usual libraries. You know what? I will just copy paste these ones because I want uh, just to save time. And you can see we'll use NumPy, pandas. I'm actually not doing DataVis today, so none of that. Um, label encoder to uh, convert text labels to numerical labels. Robust scaler to scale our data down to uh, uh, similar ranges and train test split to automatically shuffle our data and split it into four sections as we need. So for our models we'll use two models uh, both neural networks. And we're going to compare the performance of SKLearn's neural network the MLP classifier here and TensorFlow. So uh, let's, uh, let's get started. Let's uh, getting started. Perfect. And then we'll start by just reading in our data. So data pandas.readcsv and the file is over here. So we'll load that in. Oh, I didn't import it. There we go. Okay. And all right, so right away we see this data is going to need some cleaning up. So I think the first thing that we should do while well, we pre-process it, um, let's note that the date column is not providing any useful information, right? It's just, you know, it, it's not going to be predicting uh, who won. So let's just drop it. Data.drop date uh, on the first, or the column axis and in place. Okay, take another look. Data is gone, we're good to go. All right, so we can see over here, uh, we have some NAN missing values. So let's take a look at which columns uh, need to be have, have uh, missing values dealt with. So let's uh, dealing with, with missing values. Okay, so we can check the data dot is null, which will give us uh, all the every time there's a missing value will get us true. So if we use the sum on that, we can see how many missing values are in each column. So um, notice that we don't have a lot of training examples in this data set, only 128. So these two columns have quite a few missing examples, uh, own goals and own goal time. I think it makes sense just to drop these columns because it's completely filled with Miss, uh, missing examples. In fact, there's only 12 non-missing uh, values in each one. So we, could, we should be safe to just go ahead and drop those. It's not going to be too much information lost. Data.drop and own goals and own goal time. And on the first axis, in place. Now if we take another look at this, they're gone, but we can see there's one more column with missing values, which is the first goal. And this doesn't have such a significant amount of them that we should drop the whole thing. What a, a good thing to do in this case, um, where is it, which is the one? Can we see it on here? Uh, right here, first goal. See it has a few of them, but only 34. Uh, we can actually find the mean of this whole uh, column and replace every missing value with a mean. That will make it. Uh, if we we could if like setting them to zero wouldn't be as good because that way, um, you know it would it would pull the variance uh, down. So we'll set it to the mean. By uh, okay, we'll use the the fill na uh, function. So the first goal column. 
dot fill na. So filling all na values with the value that we're going to fill it with is going to be the mean of that column, right? And so we're just going to set that uh, column equal to this. So we're going to take the column and set it and fill all the uh, here, for example, if I just show you what this looks like, you can see now every time there's a missing value, it's been replaced with the mean. So now uh, we're just going to set that equal to the column itself. There we go. Now if we check this, no more missing values. So we should be good to go. All right, so next uh, missing values are dealt with. We can start encoding. So let's take a look at the data types in here. Okay, we can see uh, mostly numeric, but we have some string values. So object, this in this case is string. Uh, team is object. Opponent is an object. Man of the match is an object. Round is an object, and PSO is an object. So that's what we have to deal with with encoding. So what we should do is try to see what kind of values are in each of these. So uh, let's um, find, okay, so if we did team, uh, data team dot unique it will give us a list of all the unique values and we can see okay so this is a categorical variable <coughs> with uh, um, a unique value for each country and opponent should have the very same here you know what I'll do is I will just convert this to an F string like this so now we can just see it a little a little cleaner right and I'll do the same thing for each of the, how many? One, two, three, four, five. Each of the five uh, non-numeric columns. So this one is opponent. This one is, what is it? Uh, man of the batch. This one is uh, round and this last guy is PSO okay now we can see okay so team and opponent are categorical variables with unique values as the countries man of the match is a simple binary uh, category which is easy to deal with and PSO is also binary so both these guys right these can be, um, we can use the lab SK Learns label encoder on this. So all it's going to do is set uh, 1 to the yes and 0 to no, or vice versa, it doesn't really matter. Um, well, we should have yes as 1, actually. But so let's go ahead and just do deal with those first, because that's the easiest. So um, we'll say label encoder will be equal to new label encoder object. And then, um, so we're going to fit and transform the data. Label encoder dot fit transform. And the column we're going to use is man of the match. And if we just look at what that looks like, right? If I just, if I run this and then put it here, we can see, uh, perfect. But let's say we want to know which is being mapped to which. So we can say uh, man mappings will be a new dictionary um, mapping index to label or index and label and enumerate um, in, uh, label encoder dot classes with an underscore. This guy is just a list in order of the classes that it mapped. So that will give us some. Um, a dictionary basically. Uh, right, so man mappings looks like this. Okay, no is zero, yes is one. That looks good. So, what we'll do is we'll just take this and put it here, and we will just set this equal to the column. Oh, man of the match. Okay. So now we're going to transform that column, and we're going to do the same thing 
except for uh, the other one, which is PSO. So PSO will be fit to the PSO column and transformed. And then we'll call this PSO mappings. And we'll get that. So if we want to look at PSO mappings now, we can see 0 is no, 1 is yes. Fantastic. OK. So now if we look at the data again, let's just bring it up here. right? OK. PSO is now zeros and ones, and man of the match is now zeros and ones. So that's exactly what we want. Let's look back at the data types, and we can see now uh, this guy's an int, this guy's an int. So all we have to worry about are these three. All right, team, opponent, and round. Now if we look back here, we can see um, team and opponent are going to use the same uh, sort of system. But round is going is has an interesting uh, quality. Uh, normally, we would only use a label encoder if the values take on some sort of order. But uh, for uh, for example, we wouldn't want to use label encoder on the countries because that would allow the uh, machine learning algorithm to sort of assume that as country number goes up, uh, there's some relationship. Uh, but there's no real sense of country number, right? It's not ranked. It's just categories. But for round, for we could say that final is greater than group stage, right? Because it's later in the tournament. There is a sense of progression or order there. And it looks like um, the way the unique values are written, uh, it actually is in ascending order. Group stage is the first to, to happen, then round of 16, then quarterfinal, semifinal, third place, and finally the final. So what we can do is um, use label encoder here, right? But we have to be sure that it gets mapped uh, at, to the right um, to the right values. Okay. So let's see what happens if we do label encoder on this. So we'll take one of these, right? And we want to. We're not going to set it equal yet. We just want to check what it looks like. Uh, this one's going to be round. And we'll see round mappings looks like this. And then we'll see what round mappings looks like. OK, so there's a problem. As you can see, it has not mapped it in order, right? It's saying that semifinals is greater than finals, and uh, third place is less than finals. So it, it's, not, it's not giving us what we need. We want it in this order exactly. So how do we do that? Let's see, let's write our own little a uh, way to do that. So not this. It's not what we're doing. Uh, let's see. So let's get let's set a variable called round values, which will just be the unique values. And so data round dot unique, and let's just convert it to a list. Make it easy. And let's check out what it looks like. All right, just what we need, right? Group stage first, then round to 16, then quarterfinals and semifinals, third place, and then final. So now we're going to enumerate this to give us uh, indexes, and we'll use those as the mappings for the encoder. So uh, what we can do is um, give us a dictionary called, we'll call it round mappings, which will be, um, we would do index to label, right? But the thing is, we want to be able to reference a label and get back the index. So what we'll do is switch them label to index in index comma label. No, sorry, not in for in enumerate round values. So uh, this will give us um, well, it'll enumerate it, give it indices, and then we're going to switch them. Right, so that um, we can reference the actual string as the key and get back the, the uh, numeric equivalent. So now if we look at that, round mappings. Whoops. OK. We can see just, just like we wanted. Each one has been assigned a number from 0 to 5 in ascending order, where final is the highest and group stage is the lowest. So that that's helpful. Okay. Now, how do we apply it? 
we use the apply function. Uh, so data, the round column, dot apply. Now here we're going to pass in a function. It will be anonymous lambda function that takes in some x and returns that same x passed uh, through round mappings. So we're going to take x, which will be a value in round, which will be one of these guys, and we're going to pass it through round mappings, which will uh, get, uh, pass it through, get back the um, the encoded value, and then it will apply that back to the value in the column. So if we just look at what that looks like, you see everything has been mapped to 0 or 5. And I can show you here. Originally it's looking like this. We're group stage is 0, final is 5, and you can see 5, 5, 4, 4, 3. 5 is final, 4 is third place, and 3 is semifinals. Okay, so what we'll do is just uh, set that equal now. Right. Okay, great. So now let's look at data one more time. We can see that round now has a value between 0 and 5. So there's only one more guy. If you look at this, right? Uh, right, two, two guys essentially, but it's the same, same sort of problem. So um, these guys, we're going to have to use one hot encoding. One hot encoding is basically, uh, so we have a bunch of values. You know, it's better if I show you actually. Better if I show you here. So let's say, okay, let's look at the team column. This has a bunch of different um, values, right? If we look at the unique values here, these are the different values it takes on, and each element in the column has one of these values. But what if we made a new column for each of these values where every example had a 1 or a 0, depending on whether uh, this this value is the correct value for that example. So for to show you what I mean, there's a pandas function called get dummies, which will do just this for us. If we uh, check out the dummies of this uh, column, you can see now every example. Here I'll, I'll pull up uh, data team, right? So um, every example has now been converted into 32 new columns, sorry, um, right, originally it was just one value, which is Russia in this case, and now we have 32 new columns where the only one is on Russia, so that's called one hot. There's only one that has a one, all the rest have zero for every single example. Number two is Saudi Arabia, so we have a one Saudi Arabia, zero everywhere else. Three, uh, three well, I should say index number two is Egypt, Egypt has a 1 and a 0 everywhere else. So this is uh, basically what we're going to do is append all this data right onto our uh, data set and then we're going to remove the original column. And we're going to do the same thing for team and for opponent which have the same sort of situation. Okay so uh, let's delete this and let's say Okay, the thing is, if we think about this, because um, team and opponent take on the same values, right? If I look at uh, opponent dot unique, we can see they have the same values, maybe in a different order, but um, same values are there. So if I if I made a dummies for opponent as well. we're going to have duplicate columns, right? We want to put all this information uh, into the data, but we can't have duplicate column names or it'll make things messy. So what we can do is just apply uh, right here, we can say uh, data opponent dot apply a new function that we d will specify taking in an X and which will be a string in this case, right? We're still dealing with these guys and we will put opponent underscore plus x. So now all of the values have opponent underscore un mapped. And then if we um, take the dummies of that, right, so here,
put it in there instead. Now you can see every column has opponent uh, attached to the beginning. So now we won't have duplicate column names. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and concatenate them together. So pandas.concat is going to take um, a list of a bunch of data frames and put them together along a specified axis. Here we want it on the column axis so that they go side by side rather than on top of each other. And so data is our original data and we're going to add to it the dummies value. You know what, actually, let me just map this for real first. Data opponent equals this. Okay. So now if we look at data again, this says regular names, this says the the original names except with opponent at the beginning. So now we can apply one hot to each of these separately. So uh we're going to get the dummies for this, the dummies for this, and then the whole data set and concatenate those all together and then remove the original team and opponent columns. So uh, pd.concat, you know, I'll just take it from up here, right? Uh, no, you know, I'll just write it again. Not not concat, pd.getdummies for the team column. And then the last thing we're concatenating is pd.getdummies for the opponent column. So now we're putting data, the dummies, co the dummies columns for team, and the dummies columns for opponents all together. And we'll set this equal to data again. Well, I'll call it data uh, concat. So now if you look at data concat, here we go. Uh, the thing is, as you can see, it has all the one hot values here, but we still have these guys. So we're just going to go ahead and remove them. Dot drop uh, team. Well, let me get an array right. Uh, list of team opponent along the first axis and in place. Now they're gone. Now, if we look at our data types, uh, well, I actually we can't see them all. So let's see. Uh, we can see if one, if there's any equal to object. This will give us true false values for that. And then we can take the numpy sum of all of this to get the number of object entries left. And you can see there's nothing left. So we're done with pre-processing our data. I mean, uh, at least done with uh, encoding our data. So next, uh, probably the last step, is scaling. We're going to scale uh, every all the features to have the uh, to be in a similar range. So let's uh, we'll use the robust scaler here. Okay. Uh, so we will say y equals our y our y value is going to be where is it? Uh, I can't see it right now. Man of the match though. Man of the match. And our x will be everything else. So dot drop man of the match. Okay. So now y should be 128 long vector of um, uh, classifications, zeros and ones. And our x should be everything except man of the match. So we now have 85 instead of 86. All right, so this is good. Um, so let's scale x. So we'll use scalar is robust scalar. And then x is going to be scalar dot fit transform x. However, this returns a numpy array, so I'm just going to turn it back into a data frame and keep the columns the same as they were. Now we scaled it, check x again. 
Now all the values have been scaled between uh, I'm not sure exactly what robust scaler does. I know it, it accounts um, better for outliers uh, but looks like looks like it might be similar to standard scaler which gives it unit variance for every feature and the one hot values have been left untouched ones and zeros so this looks good this looks ready to feed into our model first we're going to have to split the data so splitting the data and we'll just use the train test split for that as one line x train x test whoops y train y test train test split x and y and we'll give it a train size of 70% since we have such few examples. Okay, so we we'll split it. Now that also shuffles our data, so we won't have to worry about that. And now the training phase. So like I said before, we're going to use two models, both neural networks, one from SKLearn and one from TensorFlow. So we'll say the SK model is going to be an MLP classifier. and we're going to fit it to uh, x train y train oh yeah we should also specify the hidden layer sizes let's just see uh, so I think we'll give it a 16 by 16 alright uh, Maybe 32, 32. Okay. So we'll fit it. There we go. And since it hasn't converged, but it should be alright. So we'll also do one for TensorFlow. So TensorFlow is a little more set up. We're going to specify some more uh, parameters. So tf.keras.input. So an input layer with the shape being. Uh, how many columns we have? 85 in our X. So it's a vector of 85 uh, members. X will be a dense layer or fully connected layer, similar to how we have here. You have keras dot layers dot dense, and the number of units will be uh, 32. And we'll use ReLU activation. And we're going to pass in inputs, feed it in to this guy. And we'll do another one, just like we have here. 32 also, except here we're going to feed in x. And the last outputs will be another uh, dense layer. Except this time it's only going to have two, because we're classifying here. So we have two, we have a zero and one to classify to. Then activation is, all, is going to be a softmax here and we pass an x. That sets up our model and then we can call it tf model. It's going to be tf.keras.model uh, inputs will be inputs or inputs layer and our outputs will be outputs our outputs layer. Okay, there's our model and then we have to compile it. So uh, for an optimizer I'll use Adam. For a loss function, I will use uh, tf.keras.losses sparse categorical cross entropy. And for metrics, use accuracy. Okay, so we compile it, and now we will just fit it. So tfmodel.fit and we pass an X train and Y train. Uh, validation split. It would be nice to see uh, how our validation is doing, but you know, we have so little data, we don't really have so much room to use validation. So we'll just say batch size, uh, let's say 16, and epochs will be 200, I believe. That was what the max iterations here was. Um, 
And that's for that's for stochastic. Hmm. So this is doing mini batch. This is doing stochastic. So you know, let's see how they perform separately. Okay. So let's get the results. So first, we'll fit it right. Okay. Okay, so it's totally overfit. Uh, you know, let's get a let's actually get a validation split in there. Twenty percent of the of the training set, and we'll just redefine it. Check it again. This time we'll see. Okay, what's our validation accuracy looking like? You can see validation accuracy accuracy is hardly going up while our training accuracy is going up substantially. So it looks like, uh, you know, this really doesn't need too many passes. Let's try a higher batch size, 32. Oh wait, I should recompile it. Okay, this is looking better. So, Looks like probably about um, 10 epochs looks more like it. So we'll try it one last time, Get try to get the best results. And now we will get our results. So, results. Okay, very simply we'll get the SK score. It's going to be our SK model dot score, X train. Y train, and our TF score will be our TensorFlow model, our TF model. Dot evaluate <coughs> X train Y train, verbose false. Okay, and now we will print them. SK learn model, SK score. and TensorFlow model TF score and the results, oh I should say TF score so one okay what is going on here? No, I put it in the wrong spot <laughs> so this is very interesting, we have 100% accuracy on the sklearn model which is very weird. Let's try rerunning it, see if we get anything different. No, nope, still 100%. I'm wondering if we did something wrong, because that, that doesn't seem right. <clears throat> if we lower this to 16 by 16. Still gives us 100%. I wonder if we are... You know, I really don't know what that's about. These look like, if it's if that's true, this is amazing, right? We're predicting with 77% accuracy um, the who, who gets man of the match. However, we have to take into account that our test set, right down here, x test dot shape is actually only 39 examples. So this could be really bad. You know, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. However, it looks like we have a decent output, decent results. So I think that is um, it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment below with any suggestions. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.